These three young girls defied expectations, committing heinous crimes that landed them on death row. According to police, Cole knew the Sumners and had even bought a car from them. They say she provided the link. The couple was kidnapped and robbed, their bodies found in a shallow grave in Georgia. This is the horrifying tale of Tiffany Cole, Amelia Carr, and Krista Pike, the women on death row. Reggie and Carol Sumner were a 61-year-old couple who knew Tiffany Cole since her family had been their neighbors. When the Sumners moved to Jacksonville, Florida, they sold a car to Cole. She agreed to make monthly payments. Little did they know that their friendly neighbor Cole had some nefarious plans. Cole and her boyfriend, Michael James Jackson, decided to visit Jacksonville in June 2005 to complete the car paperwork. They stayed at the Sumner home, but Jackson had a devious plan, to rob the couple. In early July, Cole, Jackson, and two other guys named Alan Wade and Bruce Nixon showed up at the Sumner's house and unleashed their attack once inside. The Sumner's were tied and tossed into the trunk of their Lincoln town car. They went off on a twisted road trip, driving across the border to a remote part of Georgia. Arriving in Georgia, the Sumner's were forced to reveal their bank account details. To their horror, Wade and Nixon pushed them into a grave pit and buried them alive. Afterward, Cole pawned stolen jewelry, and the group even used their ATM card to grab over $1,000 in cash. But they were tracked down at a hotel in South Carolina using the ATM card and were arrested. Feeling remorseful, or perhaps looking for a lighter sentence, Nixon willingly led the police to the Sumner's grave. After a week-long trial, Tiffany was found guilty of first-degree murder. It is hard to connect the face in these photos to the horrible crime committed with her boyfriend and his friends, neighbors of her family first robbed, then buried alive in a grave. She is currently on Florida's death row. Alan Wade and Michael Jackson, her partners in crime, also received death sentences. I'm not the monster that created this, but I am sorry I met him. Bruce Nixon pleaded guilty to second-degree murder. Tiffany was sentenced to 45 years in prison. Recent legal developments have led to new sentencing hearings for Cole, Wade, and Jackson. New developments in a big local story that we've been following since 2005. The Florida Supreme Court has thrown out the death sentence for Tiffany Cole, accused of murdering a St. Nicholas couple by burying them alive in Georgia. Next up on the list is a murderer with a troubled past. Did her troubled upbringing push her towards a life of crime? Well. It's up for you to decide after hearing her story. You call it death row? No, we call it life row. It's life row. Mm -hmm. Life row? Mm -hmm. Why? Because we're not dying, we're living. Amelia Lily Carr had a troubled past. At age 15, she reported abuse by her father, but later withdrew the statement. Her father was found guilty of trying to hire someone to kill his own family and was sent to prison. Carr herself got married twice. She suffered from domestic violence in her first marriage. She even got a restraining order against her ex-husband, but strangely ended up stealing exotic birds with him. We learned that Amelia already had three children and was currently eight months pregnant with her fourth child. She had three children. One was born from her relationship with her ex-boyfriend, Jamie Acomb. But the web of relationships became even more entangled when she became engaged to Joshua Damien Fulgham who shockingly married another woman named Heather Strong just one month later. Surprisingly, Carr maintained contact with Fulgham and even babysat Strong's children, as revealed by Carr's own family. We got along really well. Our children is where we were closer. We both had that maternal love and we both always tried to do what was best for our kids. But soon after, Carr was arrested for threatening Strong with a shotgun. The charges were dropped, but investigators later discovered Carr had threatened Strong to withdraw her complaint. Amidst the chaos, Carr and Fulgham found their way back to each other, while Strong started a new relationship. However, Fulgham and Strong got into legal battles for the custody of their children. It was a huge mess. In February 2009, Strong went missing in Florida. Investigators later discovered her remains in a shallow grave. Carr, pregnant with Joshua Fulgham's child at the time, was arrested for her involvement in the crime. It turned out that Carr had lured Strong into a storage trailer, where she placed a bag over her head and tied her to a chair. Strong tragically died of asphyxiation. 
Carr and Fulgham faced separate trials for their roles in the murder. Carr was found guilty and sentenced to death. Meanwhile, Fulgham received a life sentence without the possibility of parole. I'm actually one of those people. I am sitting on death row for nothing more than a series of lies, while the person who actually committed the crime got a life sentence. Following her conviction, she was placed on death row in Florida. Do you think the resentencing was just? If you found Carr's story bizarre, the following case will send shivers down your spine. But before we head to it, hit that shiny red subscribe button to stay tuned for more cases like these. That is unacceptable, and I realize that. But I don't deserve to die for the actions of three individuals. Pike is the youngest woman sentenced to death in the post-Furman era of the United States. But what led this young woman to commit such a heinous crime? Pike had a troubled life. She dropped out of high school and joined the Job Corps. During this time, she developed a relationship with the Daryl Ship. They delved into the dark realms of the occult and devil worship. Pike was jealous of her classmate, Colleen Slemmer. Fueling her obsession, Pike believed Slemmer was trying to steal her boyfriend. Pike plotted to lure Slemmer to an isolated, abandoned steam plant. On January 12th, 1995, Pike, Ship, Peterson, and Slemmer ventured into the woods to make peace by offering Slemmer some marijuana. Little did she know that it would be the last day she got high. Slemmer endured relentless torment, beatings, slashes, and even a pentagram carved into her chest. Pike then smashed her skull with a chunk of asphalt. The 18-year-old even kept a piece of Slemmer's skull as a haunting souvenir. Word of the crime spread when Pike began flaunting the bizarre souvenir at school, so it didn't take long for authorities to connect the dots. Pike, Ship, and Peterson got arrested soon. Not only did prosecutors have a cheerful confession, police found a keepsake from the killing. She had a piece of the skull wrapped up in a napkin in her coat pocket. During Pike's trial, she was sentenced to death by electrocution. Pike's journey through the legal system was filled with twists and turns. But thanks to all the legal battles, there are chances that her sentence will be commuted. Now the question remains, will Krista Gail Pike face the ultimate punishment for her crimes? If she gets executed, she'll be the first woman to be executed in Tennessee in almost 200 years. All these cases are chilling reminders that the criminal mind knows no bounds. Tiffany Cole, Amelia Carr, and Krista Pike each had troubled pasts, tangled relationships, and motives that led them down a dark path. The stories of these women will continue to haunt us. That's a wrap for today. Share your thoughts in the comments. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.